up and going. All right, uh, this is episode three. Episode three of Brave Voices with Moses, Amaya, Anthony, and we're here with Mrs. Strula. All, All right. right. Um, I guess yeah. Let's just get started. So, first off, I'd like to ask you, like, like first off, just your background and where did you go to school? Yeah, uh, I'm from actually Vancouver, Washington, so up north by Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, grew up there. Uh, went to high school very similar to El Cajon, uh, but our big populations that were there were we had a large uh, Asian American population, so Cambodian, mm-hmm. Samoan, uh, Russian, and Bosnian populations. But we were a very EL focused school, a very diverse school. Um, and then I ended up going to University of Washington for college, and then decided to move down to California and live with my brother and go to Irvine for my <laughs> teaching credential. And then just kept heading south and ended up in the East San Diego. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how was that? Like, uh, like it sounds like it was very diverse. Like, that's like uh, a lot of groups I've never heard like in one place. So how was that? It was good. I mean, I really enjoy that part of my high school experience, having friends from different backgrounds, from culture, different languages. Uh, my high school soccer team, um, big soccer player, and my high school soccer team ended up having uh, somebody from El Salvador, Mexico, Canada, Great Britain. Uh, South Korea and Japan uh, and Iraq all on the team at the same time. Um, and just being able to meet people from different backgrounds was also something that got me into education and something that I really enjoyed. And then moving from Washington down to California, that was probably most culture shock, just moving from there and not having the wet weather and just terrible time up in Washington. <laughs> so much better down here in California. So I haven't gone back. Mm-hmm. All right. Um... Well, why did you become principal? Like, what led you to that? Yeah, I became principal. Uh, most people say like they became a teacher or something like that because of a teacher that inspired them. Um, mine was kind of the opposite. I had a U.S. history teacher uh, that was just uh, horrible. Um, and so, actually, I was I was an AP honor student most of my time in high school. And my junior year, I decided to be an ASB, and they just scheduling things. I ended up in college prep English at U.S. history, and um, I had this teacher, Mr. B, and he um just treated my friends like they weren't smart like he told them to um like talk a certain way or sort of how the heck do you not know that and kind of things like that and so um i would talk to my friends about how much i didn't like him and the way they had him for ap and they were like oh he's so caring he so cares about us he asks gives us extra help um and i just didn't like the fact that my friends the people that i had class with people i'd grown up with had an adult that was treating them the way they did and so I decided I want to go into education so I could be um, a teacher that treated kids equally and treated kids with respect no matter where they come from, their background, and then uh, kind of moved into administration and stuff like that because I saw uh, a larger sphere of influence. I could help larger than my the kids that come see me in my classroom, the more I could get involved with that. So you just wanted change. Like you saw there was something wrong and you just wanted like something good in it. Yeah, I just wanted people to be treated fairly and people to be believed in. And the fact that kids um, are dealt the hand they're dealt when they're born um, and then we're, they're trying to do the best with what they have in front of them. And so we want to support and help everybody out and help people be successful. And I think the role of the teacher is to empower and help and strengthen the kid. Um, it should never be to bring the kid down. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys want to ask some questions? Um, what do you do on planning? Um, I'm sorry, what do you do on changing? The school, like, what do you plan on doing to change the school? So we've done a lot of things, um, and I mean, the school is a great school. I didn't come in here and say I need to fix everything in Elkhorn Valley because Elkhorn Valley is a great school. Um, but we're really focusing a lot on uh, teaching the whole student, right? So we're not here just to learn math or English or science. We're we're here to help support the student in the whole entire way around. I mean, there's mental health services, um, physical needs, uh, and education too, right? And so. Uh, you see, we focused a lot in the last couple of years uh, on like behavior expectations and cell phone policies and like what you're supposed to act like in college. I have a big thought of like, if you want somebody to know something, you have to be willing to teach it to them. Um, so that's why we talk a lot and you have your teachers talking about classroom norms and teaching about expectations in class and talking about behavior uh, kind of codes a lot. Um, we kind of shifted that mentality. And then the community center is something that was started here before I got here, but we've really leaned into. And I think it's done a good job providing the resources for kids to help them do what you guys need to do. Your job is to learn here, right? And you shouldn't have to worry about those other things outside of here while you're at campus working. So it's not something I just snap my fingers and change. It's the teachers. Um, We have, you know, some amazing staff here on campus. And my role is just to help them reach the abilities that they can and and support them to to do the things that they can do best. 
Now, was there any certain reason you decided to come to ECV? Yeah, so I was at El Capitan High School for 11 years before this, um, and I had decided I was actually wanted to, to leave the school, um, and then this job came open before. I'd actually applied for this position when Mr. Williams got the job the first time, um, and then I got it the second time I applied for it, but um, just the diversity of the school and the, the fact that this is a school where uh, we have such a wide range of students and we have such a support system we can put in place from the campus and the fact that like we can make this campus such a great place that kids feel better when they come to our campus and feel supported and that they can achieve more from here. And I just love the staff, the diversity and the history of the school. Uh, was the reduce of school fights due to staff working together or was just that a change over time? I think it's our, I think I'd like to say it was a lot of stuff that we did. Um, we did have the change, you know, of kids coming from COVID and being out of school and being back in school. And so there's that, that change and switch. Now our freshmen have been in school since middle school. Um, but I think a lot of things also is, you know, that focus on those expectations of what it's like to be a brave, to be brave program. Um, the things that we have in campus to help promote that and then promoting kids to like find a trusted and respected adult and handle situations without violence, I think has been a big push from us as well. Um, so I think they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I, I would like to say the work we're doing has helped lower those numbers and help people feel more safe on campus. Um, but there's also outside factors, like I said, of kids being used to being at school again and, um, you know, figuring things out. In your personal opinion, what is your opinion on every elective that ECB has to offer? I think, I mean, electives are what a lot of times what drive us, right? And so I think it's great to have the wide variety of electives we have. Um, we all need to learn English, science, math, PE, all the subjects we're teaching. Um, but our passion a lot of times end up being those electives that we have. Sometimes, sometimes there are English, sometimes it is math is your passion. Um, but I think those electives are a good way for our students to take what they're learning in classes and put them into action. Um, whether it's designing jewelry after what you've learned from math or welding after what you've learned in, in math or so, and, or, you know, AME writing scripts based on what you've learned in English. So I think they kind of go hand in hand and we have such a great variety of them. I love the CTE programs, the fact that we can prepare kids for jobs outside of school. Um, and we really want to grow our jewelry and art and BAPA uh, options. Um, because I think it helps kids feel connected to the school and feel like have a sense of purpose outside of just learning the academics when they feel connected to that aspect of campus. All right. And then, well, the last one was um, uh, like, who was your inspiration to become a principal? But I think you already touched up on that, unless you want to. No, I mean, I, it's funny that so uh, small world is that me and Valhalla's principal actually went to the same high school um, all the way up in Washington State. Um, and we had the same bad teacher, but um, what got me to want to be a principal and stuff is, is working with my second year teaching. I started working with a grant and started stepping outside the classroom to help people. And, and I just saw um, from some good, a good principal mentor I had um, that you could make change and have positive influence outside of the class. It's not just purely discipline and that's all all administration's doing. They're trying to help teachers do the best that they possibly can. Um, and give them the supports. And so that kind of drove me to want to step out of the classroom and do that. Um, inside the classroom, you, you mean, you're teaching five sections of 36 kids. So you're, you only see a certain amount of kids where when I got an administration, we could help more people reach their kids. And so it kind of grew that sphere. And that's what kind of made me want to get in administration and landed me here. Um, if you'd asked me when I was in high school, what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a high school soccer coach and a high school teacher. Um, and I'm not either of those right now, but I am, I am happy where I'm at and, um, I really enjoy working here at Oakland Valley. All right. And then I guess that's the end of the questions, unless you want to add something. No, Luke. thank you for having me. It's, it's so cool to be a part of something like this on our campus that's run by the students and student generated. And you guys have been professional about all of it and interviewing on the sidelines and just the Amy program and you guys are doing such great things. All right. Uh, alive then, I guess. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, one more question. Uh, are you going to be there for the volleyball game? Wait, today, I, today uh, I have my son's soccer practice. I will not mm -hmm. be there for the volleyball game. Uh, All right. Uh, okay, yeah. then. All right. But well, I'll, I'll be there at one of them soon, but not, not tonight. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for listening to Brave Voices. This is Moses. Anthony. Amaya. And then we were with? Mr. Sherwin. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.